Hi guys, Russ here from Wilson Land and Cattle Company. Today we're going to be taking forage samples and checking the nutrient value of the forages that the cows are in, or the cows are going to be in. We're going to take several fields here just so, and the only reason I'm doing it is just so you guys have an idea what you'd be working with if you were grazing stockpile. Before we get started, please subscribe, like, comment, share with a friend, and hit that notification bell. And the stampede is on. This is the furthest field that we have to grace. I'm glad we have it off before the snow hit. Go. Okay guys, got the cows moved here, and you notice that where the cows come moved up, they really chewed things up, but that's an indicator of how wet it really is here, and you notice we set an alleyway up into the center of the field here. We're going to set the water tank over there along the edge of that field, and our only hydrant is one field over, so we have to actually run a garden hose and it's going to be above freezing during the daytime so we're able to do that i was going to graze this whenever it was we had snow on the ground but being that i have an opportunity to graze it while it's above freezing we're going to do that let's get the wire up here so they can't escape on us and then we'll we're going to pull a, a forage sample in this field and you can tell the cows really don't like this field But they'll get used to it. We're going to pull this fence here out. It was just set to move the cows in here, is all. And you can tell by the cows by the way they're balling. They're, they were kind of searching around for feed. But they've kind of settled down and they're eating now. And one of the things that we could have done here is give them this whole section out to where we can get water to them. And give them two or three days here. But the problem with that would have been is the cows would have selectively grazed. They would have went through and took all the all the green stuff and trampled the other stuff and we would have less grazing here so they're actually going to go through they'll eat some of this brown stuff along with the green stuff and balance their rations a little bit better so they'll be here in this section here for a day and then we're going to move them that direction well actually we're probably going to move them that way first get the back part of that grazed off because it's super wet back there and then 
we'll come out and graze this front section. We're just about finished up here on this farm here. We got oh, around 20 acres left here. Well, no, there's not 20 acres. There's four, six and a half, ten and three, ten and a half. We got 12 and a half acres here, so that should give us at least 24 days of grazing. And that will get us well into the new year. And then we go to the other side of the farm, or go across the road to the other farm, and there's an additional 30 to 40 acres over there. So that's going to get us clear into late February. And I'm hoping that we get most of March, but we're going to have to see here. I don't know. Um, we're still trying for that 365 day grazing. Anyhow, let's take a sample here, and, well, and we're going to take a sample in some other fields here. and We'll do some video of it. You can see here what we're dealing with. For a lot of folks, that looks like really nasty stuff. And I'm not going to go through and take 30 samples. That's what's recommended to go through and take 30 samples, mix them together. I'm just going to take a couple samples here and mix them together. And... Then we'll send them in for a forage analysis. It's good enough for me. This is field 20A. We're going to go ahead and take a sample here. Let's see here what it looks like. Go ahead and put that in a bag. This is F. 20A. Put it in the bag. Send it away for analysis. My nutritionist will be up here next week, so... He'll take, take these samples and send them in for me. F20A. We don't want to forget our corn knife. We're going to go... We're going to get water into these girls first. So we're going to go ahead and do that before we take any more samples. Okay, we got the water in here with the cows. We've got our mats in front of our tank. And... The hydrant's right there. We're on about a 200 foot garden hose. We'll have to drain it at night, but that's all right. It keeps the cows out here, it's worth it. You can see the cows, they've settled in. They're not bellowing like they were. They're finding the grass that they need. F20A is primarily orchard grass and red clover. It has some, there's some Timothy in there, some canary grass, but it's primarily orchard grass and red clover. Okay, let's go check another field. We're not going to do a lot, maybe three or four samples just to give you guys an idea of what you're working with. I am very comfortable feeding this stockpile to my cows, but I know some folks are looking at that and they're saying, Ugh, that's terrible stuff. Well, it's not as bad as you think it is. So let's go take, take another couple samples and this is field f24 like i said it's primarily orchard grass it has or not orchard grass it has it's primarily fescue with some red clover in it we're just gonna see what it looks like there we're gonna take a sample out of it here and, and see there's a bunch of orchard grass we're not gonna test that though because it's like i said it's primarily fescue see here the deer have come through and eaten the grass off i'm going to pull the grass out of these three bunches here this is field f24 There's about almost three acres here. I 
that's what it looks like. Nice tall grass. Feed quality in this field's a little bit lower than normal. I think, but I don't know that for sure. Okay, off to the next one. Okay, this here's a riparian area. There's about, about two acres here in this riparian area. And it's primarily Timothy. Most of it's Timothy. There's some, I see switchgrass here. Uh, there's clovers in here along with fescues and some orchard grass. We're just going to take a sample here. This is riparian area R2 or field R2. We will be grazing this even though it is in the riparian area. All these fields have over 100 days of rest on them, just for your information. R2. That's what we got. Looks pretty rough. We're going to test it anyhow. That's why we test. We have no idea what's in there. When we get these samples back, I'm going to go over them with you. Show you some of the things that I look at. It's nice and soft grass. I would think that it I don't know what it's going to test. It's probably pretty low in protein, but I'm okay with that. Okay, guys. This field here has been rested over a year. You can still see a lot of nice green in there, but it has been rested well over a year. We're going to go ahead and pull a sample just to see what it tests out at. It's going to be hard to get a relative sample in here, but... We're just going to pull a couple samples, mix them together, and, and call it good. Okay, I reserved this section here as part of my hot weather plan. There's lots of shade trees in here, and if we needed it to get the cows into shade last year, this is where we were going to put them, but fortunately we didn't need it, so it just rested all year long. We're going to be in here grazing, I guess, probably maybe in about a week or so. It's going to be over a week, maybe nine to ten days. Let's go ahead and, and pull a couple samples, mix them together, and call it good. I'm going to mark this section as shade. Shade. Okay, I'll go ahead and yank a couple samples here. Field. Clover, there's Timothy, fescue, the green is pretty primarily all fescue. I'm going to go ahead and There is some orchard grass in here too, and I want to have that in the sample as well. So I'm going to snag me some orchard grass. Okay, one thing to keep in mind whenever you're grazing winter stockpile if you have some high maintenance livestock and move over, Toby that require higher quality feeds such as lactational cows, feeders, 
finishers and large frame cows or large frame sheep um you're going to possibly want to supplement them with something maybe a higher quality hay if you're grass fed uh you know like a baleage second crop cut and baleage you know it doesn't have to folks at all it doesn't have to all be be all or nothing um you can still utilize this okay this here has 75 days rest on it this is oh man i can't remember the number of this field we're going to call it f25 you can see it's nice and green yet but there's not near as much biomass in here not nearly as much biomass so we're going to take a sample and see what it is it's going to be higher quality no doubt about it this is just a corn knife you can't have it F25. You can see it's not nearly as tall. but it's higher quality. So we're gonna send it in, see what it is. Okay guys, if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe, like, comment, share with a friend. And hopefully you found this useful. And like I said before, if you're finding it, it's too low quality, you can always supplement with something to help up the feed quality. And you can still utilize poor quality forages and, and keep your livestock out there and perhaps save yourself a little bit of money. Okay guys, have a wonderful day. We'll talk to you later.